Okay, the first complex fraction problem is similar to the ones that I worked uh, on the board in the class and they're in the class notes. So the first thing is to figure out what to put on the tops. You have two, four, and you have three, six. So again, you're looking for, right? Least common multiple of all those numbers. So you take the biggest one, which is six. Six, 12, 18. 12 is gonna work, right? Because two, three, four, and six all divide evenly into 12. And you take the highest power of whatever letter you see. Well, I see an X and the highest power of it is one. So you're gonna put a 12 X on the top of every one of these. Now remember, once you do this step, it completely destroys the problem. So you have to be careful. Now I'm gonna do it in green. So remember, division. 12 divided by four is three. But what about the X? Nothing cross it out. So that X is still there. Here, 12 divided by two is six, but this X and this X cross out completely and leave you with a six. 12 divided by six is two, the X's cross out. 12 divided by three is four, the X's cross out, right? As long as you have an X and an X, they cross out. Here, there's nothing to cross this X out with. What do you, how are you gonna cross this X out? It has to stay there. Now multiply what's left, three X times three. You have to do these things carefully. 9x plus 5 times 6 is 30. Now on the bottom, I don't have any x's. I have 2 times 7, which is 14. And then I have 2 times 4, which is 8. And I'm supposed to subtract them. And I will through the magic of eraser. 14 take away 8 is 6, right? 14 minus 8. I want to try to save a little space here since I don't have a gigantic board. Now, you can do this two ways, but the way you're supposed to do it is to factor the top. But if you notice that you have a nine, a six, and a 30, you could divide all those numbers by three and get the right answer. I'll show you in a minute, but factor a three from the top, right? Nine and 30 are both divisible by three. So put a three in the front and then divide three. Nine by three, nine divided by three is three. 30 divided by three is 10. And then you have that six there. Now, this is multiplication. So you can divide three into six. Three divided by three is one. Six divided by three is two. So you get three X plus 10 over two. And this would work too, though you're really not supposed to do this, but you could just say, look, nine, 30 and six are all divisible by three. So just divide them all by three. You get the same damn thing. <laughs> I mean, they're all multiples of three. So you can just cut them all by three, but you're supposed to do this. So, you know, do that. All right, so that's the first one. All right, so here is number two. Now, this one's actually pretty simple. Although one of the terms doesn't have a bottom, right? There's a one there. You don't have to put it there. So who cares? It's not a fraction. I see X and I see X squared. So you take the highest power that you see, which is X squared. So this is what I'm gonna multiply everybody by. Now, when I say everybody, I mean everybody, including the dude that's not a fraction. If you don't multiply him, this just doesn't work. They all have to get the LCD. So now cross them out. X squared divided by X leaves you with an X. Right? You have XX on top, X on the bottom. They cross out, you get X. Here they cross out entirely and give you a one. Here they cross out entirely and give you a one. Here, there's nothing to cross out. It's not even a fraction. So you have to multiply that X squared by that four. But first things first, let's do the top. The bottom is gone now. I'm left with two times X, which is two X. Plus, plus, Three times one, hello, that's three. X squared times four is four X squared, right? We put the four on the front, we don't wanna look silly. The X squared's crossed out, they're not there anymore. Pow. Now you can do a lot of weird, silly shit at this point, you be very careful. This can only be simplified by factoring. The bottom is a difference of perfect squares. So how do you factor the difference of perfect squares? You put down two parentheses, choop, 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 
or all right, two pairs of parentheses. So I need something times itself that makes 4x squared. So that's 2x and 2x. But what about 4 and 1? That's not something times itself. That's what a perfect square is. It has to be something times itself. And then I need something times itself to make 9. It has to be 3 and 3. One of them will get a plus. One of them will get a minus. That looks like crap, so I'm drawing it again. 2x minus 3. Pow. Now, you're going to cross out. This entire dude on top is going to cross out the entire one on the bottom. So boom, boom, they cross out. Now, you got to be really fucking careful here. If you had 3 over, say, 3 times 2, right? 3 over 6. And you crossed out these 3s. And you put 2. I show this to my remedial class so they don't make this mistake. Three of a six, right? Six is three times two. Cross out the threes. But three divided by six is not two. Three divided by six is one over two. When you cross these out, there's a one there. So you get a half. So when you cross these out, you get a one there. So this answer is not two X minus three. That's wrong. This answer is one over two X minus three. You have to be super careful when you do that. Cause it's very easy to fuck that up and do it wrong and just cross those out and be like, hey, it's two X minus three. It's not, you have to remember the one on top. This two X minus three is on the bottom of the fraction. You can't just move it up. <laughs> it's a completely different thing. So, all right, and that's number two. Okay, problem number three. We have three terms on top this time and two on the bottom, but it's the same principle. He doesn't have a fraction, who cares? He doesn't have a bottom to cross out. The other four do, but they all have to get the LCD. So the LCD in this case, one, X, X2, X2, X. So it has to be the highest power that I see, which is x squared. So I'm going to give every one of them an x squared. If you don't do this, you can't cross them out. I'll put it over there. x squared times 1 is x squared. There's nothing to cross out. Here, I'm going to cross out. The rest of them, I have some crossing out to do. That x crosses out one of those, and you're left with x. Those x squareds cross out totally. Those x squareds cross out totally. And this one crosses out and leaves you with an x. So I have x squared times 1 minus x times 1, 1x, one minus 6 times 1, well, that's 6, over 3 times x plus 6 times 1. You just have to be very careful in keeping track of the things when you cross them out and put them together. Now, this factors and this factors. You're going to cross out the sixes. You can't cross out the sixes. All right. You can cross out the sixes if you want to get the shit wrong. Do that. So the top is a trinomial. One, two, three. Three terms, trinomial. With a one in front. Monic trinomial. We do not factor monic trinomials by grouping. It is unnecessary and redundant. What you do is you put your two parentheses down and you put X and you put X. Wow, that was hard. Problem is almost done. I'm gonna put this sign first. The other sign has to be different. How do you know? Because I multiplied two numbers and got a negative six, right? What numbers make negative, what numbers make six when you times them? One and six, three and two. That's it. Those are the only pairs of numbers you could possibly have. You either have six and one or three and two. Well, what's in the middle? The middle is a one. So it has to be three and two. Negative three times positive two is negative six. Negative three when you add it, right? Negative three plus two when you combine, negative one. Now on the bottom, GCF, this is not an X squared. You can't, you know, it doesn't break down like the top one did. So all you can do is look for the common factor to remove. I can divide three and six by three. 
So you're going to put three in the front, divide this by three, divide this by three. Six divided by three is two. Make sure three times X, three times two, six. Good to go. Now, again, one of the terms on top matches the one on the bottom. So you're just crossing that out, just like that. Now, here's what you got to be careful. So you're left with X minus three on top, and you're left with a three on the bottom. This is by design. I made sure that the number on the bottom was a three to tempt you. This shit ain't happening. Don't be going after those, cross out the threes, the answer is X. No, it doesn't work that way. I mean, if, if you want to see if something you're going to do is funky, like here, check this out. I'm going to make up a number for X, like pretend X is five. If you want to see if a move is bullshit or not. I know that five minus three is two. So I should get two over three. Now cross out the threes and see if you get the same thing. Uh, yeah, you don't. So if you want to see if a move is bullshit and you're not sure and there's a letter there, you can just make up a number for that letter and put it in and then do the move and see if you get the same thing. If you don't get the same thing, then the move is bogus and you can't do crossing out those threes. There is a bogus move. You know, just, you can't do it. It's you're not allowed. So this is your final answer. So that's number three. It's only one more to go. The final problem. Number four. So it can be a little tricky, but it's, it's a good one. You have to look at the bottom very carefully here and figure out what the LCD is going to be. You have two, you have three Y, you have two, and then you have Y. So first you have a two and a three. You're looking for the least common multiple. You know, you listen, you don't need to do this, but I'm just, but I'm showing you like what it means. Oh man. <laughs> My nine look like a little man. You are looking for the smallest common multiple, which would be six, right? That's the smallest number that is divisible by two and three. You know, 12 is divisible by two and three, but it's not the smallest. Six is the smallest. So we're gonna take that six. Now, the problem is that you have Y. And remember what I said, when there is a letter, you take the highest power of that letter you see, but there's only one of them. So you have to include that. So I'm going to put six Y. Now you have to be very careful here. Some of the bottoms have a Y, some of them don't. But regardless of that, the Y has to be here at the top. Now, when you do the division here, six divided by two is three, but the Y goes along for the right. So you get three Y there. Here they cross out completely, right? Three goes into six twice and the Y and the Y cross out. Here, two goes into six, three, and you're left with a Y. Here, again, be careful. Y crosses out with the Y and you're left with a six, right? The six don't cross out with nothing. There's no number here, one. So now multiply it very carefully. So let me just, not have that there anymore. 3y times 3y, three, 3 times 3 is 9. y times y is y squared, right? That's what y squared means, y times y. Minus 2 times 2 is 4. Aha! Now be careful. 3y times 3, 9y plus, oh, Florida's calling me, 1 times 6. Florida Disney World wants me to come down. Come have vacation. So 9y squared minus 4 on top, difference of perfect squares. 9 is a perfect square, 4 is a perfect square. You're subtracting them. Now on the bottom, though, you can't factor that. I mean, it doesn't look like it can be factored, but you have a 9 and a 6. And the thing is, 9 and 6, have, they're both divisible by 3. They have that common factor that you can remove. So the top I'm going to factor is the difference in perfect squares. Put your two parentheses down or two pair. Something times itself to make 9y squared. 3y, 3y. And then you need something times itself to make a 4. That's 2 and that's 2. And then 1 gets the plus, 1 gets the minus. That's how that game is played, right? The middles have to cross out. You have no middle term. On the bottom, you're going to factor out a 3. 
So I'm going to divide each of these dudes by three, right? Nine Y divided by three. Nine divided by three is three. The Y goes along to the right. Six divided by three is two. Yay. You don't need that there. But if it helps you to write it, then write it. Now I'm going to cross out what I can cross out, which is these. They are the same. These are the same number. Cross them out. Boom. They're not there anymore. So you're left with 3y minus 2 on top and a 3 on the bottom. And again, a temptation. I want to cross, I want to cross out the 3s. You just, you can't. Again, it looks like you can. You think you can, but you can't. It doesn't work. I mean, if you had 3 take away 2 over 3, right? 3 minus 2 is 1, right? You get a third. Now cross these out. Get the same number? No, you don't. Just this, there are moves that you can't make, and this is a move you can't make. So you could always ask me during a test or quiz, I'll tell you. Like, can I cross out those threes? And I'll be like, no, <laughs> don't. All right, so that's the fourth one. Hopefully this helps you out.